Hey everyone, this is Ken. I'm going to show you a, a couple more properties of the integral. The ones that I'm going to show you in this video are called the linearity properties, namely the integral of the sum of two functions is equal to the, the integral of the first one plus the integral of the second. And secondly, the integral of a constant times a function is equal to the constant times the integral of the function. So written out, here's what the first one looks like. Um, if I want to take the integral from a to b of the sum of two functions that I know are integrable, we haven't met too many integrable functions yet, but there's, there's a lot of them, and, and we'll get to it in, in a little bit. And so this is going to be equal to integral of the first one plus integral of the second one. And the reason for this is basically the limit laws. And I'll actually go ahead and give you what we call a proof. Uh, so you really have only one recourse here. You must go back to the definition. You go back to the definition of the left-hand side. Um, being that this is integrable, you can calculate it with just you know right-hand endpoints or, or left-hand endpoints or whatever if you like. Um, but let's use right-hand endpoints, so I'm going to take the sum. i goes from 1 to n. And then it's just going to be uh, f of xi plus g of xi, quantity times delta x. And then the limit is n goes to infinity. And here, delta x is b minus a over n. That's the common width of the n subintervals. And then you're dividing it into smaller and smaller subintervals, taking that limit. And xi are the endpoints. Uh, they're the points that determine the partition of the inter interval into n equal subintervals. So x0 is equal to a, x1 is equal to a plus delta x, xi is equal to a plus i times delta x, so on and so forth. And so what I can first do is I can distribute out the delta x. So I'll go ahead and put that here, and I'll carry through writing down the limit. So this is f of xi times delta x, and there's n rectangles, so there's n terms, i goes from 1 to n, plus the n terms for g of x. And I'm taking the limit as n goes to infinity of all of that. And I kind of did two steps here. So you can distribute out the delta x here, and then you can um, break up the sum into two sums. Remember that this is just uh, this is just a big sum. i goes from 1 to n. It has n terms. And for each of those individual terms, you're just distributing them out, and then you're collecting all of the terms with f of x i, and then all the terms with g of x i. This is called the associative property of, of addition. But in practice, it just means that you can split up this summation over the plus sign. It's no problem. And now I'm taking the limit of this sum, and the limit law says as long as both limits exist, the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. That's what I meant when I said this whole thing just breaks down to really the statement of the limit laws. So if you continue on, then this is just the limit. So n goes to infinity of the sum f of xi times delta x plus limit n goes to infinity of the sum g of xi times delta x. And this is nothing but the definition of the, of the definite integral using right-hand endpoints. Well, the official definition says you take any uh, Riemann sum, right, with the, with the mesh of the partition going to zero. But if you know that this function is integrable in advance, like if you start with a function f that's integrable from a to b, then you'll be able to calculate that integral with right-hand endpoints. And this will, in fact, be equal to integral from a to b, f of x dx. This one will, in fact, be integral from a to b, g of x dx. And so what we've kind of seen there is a little bit of a subtle point. So um, this rule 
this linearity property is only going to be true if you start out knowing that f and g are integrable. And if they are, then you can add up their integrals and it'll be equal to the sum. And so that's that rule. And with a completely similar argument, just using the limit laws, you can also prove that if you take any constant, say k, and multiply it by f of x. then this is going to be equal to constant k times the integral from a to b, f of x dx. And so the way that you'd actually give a formal proof of this is you'd write down the definition of that, and it would be, you know, like over there, it'd be a limit as n goes to infinity of uh, maybe k times f of x i, taking the sum, i goes from 1 to n, and then you just pull out the k from the sum, and then use the limit law to pull out the k from the limit and you'll end up with k times the definition of the integral. So those are uh, what we call the linearity properties of the integral. They're really useful um, for, uh, for calculating definite integrals later on, and I'll show you lots of examples of that in later videos, but for this one I'm just showing you what those properties are.